The topic area for this quiz is sensation and perception. And with sensation, we talked about psychophysics, and I presented information about the human visual system as a model for how to study the other sensory modalities described in your textbook, basically answering the questions provided in the study aids on Brightspace. So now we need to talk about perception. This will primarily be covered in your recitation, where you'll have the opportunity to examine several visual illusions. That's fun for most students. But right now what I want to do is give you a brief introduction to the topic of perception and discuss the most important concepts. So here's a definition of perception. Perception is an organism's awareness of objects and events in its environment, and it is based on interpretation. This is a higher level type of functioning than just answering questions like, did you hear the sound? Do you see the light? Is this sound louder than that sound? Sensation involves the detection and coding of stimuli, but perception is the interpretation of our experiences of those stimuli. And to illustrate this, I want to tell you a story about a famous psychologist named Carl Lashley. Lashley is famous in part for developing the Lashley jumping stand, an instrument that was used in laboratories to look study learning in rats. You don't need to know about this, but you can look it up if you're interested. Personally, I thought that the Lashley jumping stand was a cruel device to use with little lab rats. More important here, what I want to do is tell you a story about something that happened to Carl Lashley. Lashley was an individual who suffered from migraines, specifically migraines with scotomas. A scotoma is a blind spot in the visual field. One day, Carl Lashley reported that he was standing and talking to a friend while he was experiencing a migraine and then a scotoma occurred and the blind spot was located right where his friend's head should have been. And his friend was standing against a floral wallpaper. So what Lashley was seeing was his friend headless and his brain automatically filled in the floral pattern of the wallpaper where his friend's head should be. So this is a beautiful illustration of perceptual processing, not necessarily conscious, often automatic, and based on interpretation of external stimuli. Many psychologists who have studied processes of perception would describe themselves as gestalt psychologists. And the overarching gestalt principle is that the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. This means that the whole unitary object or event is not reducible to its separate parts, that when they come together, they make something more. While the overarching Gestalt principle is that the whole is greater than the sum of the parts, meaning that you cannot look at a unitary object and just break it down into its parts and fully understand it. There are also other Gestalt principles that you need to know. I'm showing you just a few of these. The first of these involves closure. When you look at the diagram above the word closure on the screen, what are you seeing? Most people see a circle, but it's not a circle. It's actually a series of little arcs drawn in such a way that our brain fills in the gaps and we see it as one unitary object. Likewise, the Gestalt principle of similarity is also shown on the screen. Here you're being presented with a series of letters, X's and O's. When you look at this, you're probably seeing a large X in that series of letters made up by small X's. And this occurs as a result of the Gestalt principle of similarity. Those X's are all similar to each other against a background of O's and so you see a large X, even though there really isn't one there. Finally, we have the Gestalt principle of continuity. This is one of my favorites. Here, I've drawn a line, and you're probably seeing it as a sine wave. That blue portion of the diagram goes up and down and up and down, just like a sine wave. But it's not really a sine wave. I've really just drawn a line and I put half a circle above and then half a circle below the line. Half a circle above, half a circle below. Yet we see it as a continuous waveform because of the Gestalt principle of continuity. 
and there are other Gestalt principles that you can read about in your textbook or look at online. I encourage you to do so. Finally, I want to point out that the way we often study perception is to present people with ambiguous sensory data or non-human animals, present ambiguous sensory data, and then ask in some fashion how they interpret that information. So I'm presenting some ambiguous sensory data on the screen. And what I want you to notice is that the H in the word the and the A in the word cat are identical. I literally pasted those in place. And yet you're reading the two words, the cat. And this illustrates that context is very important as we resolve ambiguities in our perceptions of the world. I also want you to notice that it's often dependent upon experience. You're not born being able to read the cat. And our perceptual processes are not just completed, developed, and done at birth. We continue to develop our perceptual systems. And as a result of experience, we learn how to perceive objects in the world around us.